You may be already familiar with this story of the three brick layers, but this is how it goes. Three brick layers are asked, what are you doing? The first says, I'm laying bricks. The second says, I'm building a church. And the third says, I am building the house of God. This is about having a purpose on what you do. If I were to ask you, why do you photograph? Why do you do it? What would you say? Would you have an answer? I believe that having a purpose, a reason, is crucial in photography. Otherwise, we'll be all over the place with no direction, no idea of what to do next or why, and we might end up getting burnt out. We need a compass, something that points us in the right direction so we don't get lost. But we also need to figure out how the higher calling applies to smaller chunks of time. This big purpose of mine, what does it look like in the next 12 months? What can I do in the next 30 days that goes in line with that purpose? And today, these are all very important questions. And in this video, I want to make you think about them and about your possible answers and maybe help you answer them if you haven't yet. This was, by the way, the topic of the last live stream we had over on our Patreon page just a couple of days ago. We hold an almost weekly session where we talk about topics like these and all things related to photography. And today I wanted to highlight the work of a fellow photographer and a great supporter of my work, Terry Olsen. Terry has beautiful imagery on his Flickr page, so please go check it out following the link in the description. Thank you so much, Terry, and thank you so much to all my patrons for your support. All right, so let me tell you about me first, because it's the case I know the best, of course. Why do I photograph? What am I trying to do here? I believe that I have a purpose now. This didn't happen all of a sudden. It's evolved over time. It was just a blurry concept a few years ago, but it's becoming clearer and clearer every day, even if it's still changing and evolving, of course. I see now that for years I was blind, of course, blind in a metaphorical sense. There was nothing wrong with my eyes or my brain that I know of, but it's just that I, I wasn't seeing, I wasn't paying attention. I was just going through the motions day after day. I was taking a lot of my life for granted and I didn't appreciate all I had. Nature changed all of this. I moved to Oregon, I started to go on hikes, and those experiences kept blowing my mind. I picked up a camera to capture all of that, and over time, thanks to that camera, I was able to bring that sense of wonder and awe into my daily life. Even if it was only for a few times a day, I was able to turn off that autopilot mode and see the beauty in everyday stuff. That was a feeling I wanted to chase, I wanted to explore more, and that's why I became a full-time photographer. So that is my purpose, to see no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing to wonder, to be able to stand in awe in front of a majestic mountain or in front of a tiny and fragile flower, to realize that every day has uh, magical moments that usually go unnoticed and, and to notice them and to make every day count. And I know that all of this might sound very cheesy, but photography truly makes me feel alive. I just came back from my morning walk here in town and it felt like a huge adventure, even though it's just a regular Saturday morning and I didn't go anywhere. There was a lot of fog though and that helped quite a lot. But in any case, I put myself in situations where I could not put myself if it wasn't for photography. The camera pushes me to go farther, it helps me see things that I hadn't seen before and seeing those things motivates me to take more photos. It's a cycle that goes on. It's a good cycle. That's why for whatever reason I break that cycle, I lose that momentum, I don't feel good, I feel stuck, I'm motivated, like I'm not inspired anymore. These are the moments when it's very important to have that sense of purpose, to have a clear vision of what we want to do with photography, because it reminds us of why we started and why we do it and why we will keep doing it. To me, it's just something that feels bigger than myself and all I have to do is just surrender to that feeling. So for me, what first started as something I did very sporadically, just during road trips, then became something that I did every weekend on my hikes, and eventually became something that I did every day. It became part of my life. It became a lifestyle. Photography used to be something that I did when I was done with the rest of my life, and now it was my life. That's how I acquired, how I got 
a purpose. This is just my main purpose. It's a selfish one. It's just for me. It's to discover and explore the world. There are plenty of other reasons why I do this as well. I want to share my images with other people because they might enjoy them as much as I do. I also want to inspire others to do with their photography what I do because I think it can help those people. It can help see things in a very different way and to find beauty where they thought there was none before. This is all part of the vision I have of my photography and this is why you are watching this video. This is why this channel exists at all. So that's my purpose, but what's yours? Maybe it's something similar to mine. Maybe you want to bring social change. Maybe you want to raise awareness. Maybe you want to denounce injustice. Perhaps you want a way to better remember your life, your loved ones, or maybe you're just doing it for fun, creating for the sake of creating. Whatever it is, we should be able to answer that question because it will be a compass that will guide us in the near future. Using that compass, we can translate the big picture to smaller ones. We can bring the big why into our everyday lives. Because my purpose of discovering and exploring the world is a little bit abstract and might sound hard to apply to the day-to-day -day life, right? How can we do that when we might be stuck, when we don't have money or time to go places? The key here is to widen our vision, to embrace whatever it is that we have access to. So instead of constantly journeying for majestic landscapes in faraway lands, why don't we give our local woods, the, the, the hill down the road, the vast open space that is a mile away, the little pond that is behind the mall here in town, why, why don't we give those places a try? Because in the end, it all comes down to the attitude that we show towards those places. If we take them as if we were laying bricks one on top of the other one with no meaning whatsoever, we're going to be constantly disappointed. But if we take it as if we are building something sacred, we're going to love it no matter where we are. That's what I try to do with my photography, and I hope that this comes through uh, in these videos, in this channel. But a couple of examples that give me goosebumps that are very local. Uh, one of them is a street light down the road uh, back in Indiana in the US that I love to, to look at, to photograph at any time of the year. And of course, another example is just here in my hometown in Spain, whenever it's uh, foggy. I'm very lucky because it gets foggy very often here, but it's just the whole place becomes magical and I do not want to be anywhere else when that happens. Those are just two examples of places, of themes that touch me as much, if not more, than a majestic mountain peak bathed by alpine glow. <laughs> I'm very serious when I say this. I mean, no matter where we are, we all have sunrises and sunsets, and yeah, they are kind of a cliche in photography, but they feel like magical moments. You might get snow, rain, fog, or if you live in the desert, you might get sandstorms. You might be able to go somewhere at night to look at the stars, or if you live in a city, there are plenty of buildings around you that are lit up in the dark. Okay, you might not have bears, tigers, or penguins around you, but you might have sheep, dogs, or cats. All of those things can be as interesting, if not more, than the obvious ones. And because it takes more effort, it takes more work, they're going to feel more rewarding as well. And when we do get to travel and do exciting things, well, just imagine how much more we are going to enjoy those experiences and how much more we are going to be able to see in those moments. It was this whole reframing photography from something I did a few times a year into something that I do every day, into a lifestyle. Trying to recreate what I feel when I visit a stunning location or when I experience something very special in my day-to-day -day life. And that's what changed my photography, my purpose and my life. I hope to convince you that photography can do this for you as well if you aren't convinced just yet. I have a few videos coming up from just around here where I'm trying to find beauty where I didn't think there was any before. So please consider subscribing if you haven't yet. I'd also love to hear your thoughts about this, about your purpose. Are you still working on that, exploring what moves you, what inspires you, what excites you? Or do you already have a clear idea of what you want to do? Please share your story with all of us in the comments down below. As usual, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.